Okay. There we go. This is gonna be fun. Hopefully this is fun. <laughs> if not, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's be great. Um let's just start, sod it. It's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest, she's an actor, YouTuber, and avid hobbyist, Brittany Raymond. Hi! Okay. Welcome hi. to Hi, welcome to Shut up! This is my intro. <laughs> welcome to this week's episode. Uh I'm here with Brittany Raymond. Uh, uh and uh, we're here for, for my, my podcast. Thank you for joining us. Um Brittany, why don't you tell us what we're enjoying today? We are drinking a matcha latte with almond milk and a little bit of cinnamon on top. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You know what's funny See, this morning? Okay, wait, mm. no, you go. No, 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 please, please, you're the guest. Okay, this morning I, I like, just woke up, didn't think, made a coffee, like a little espresso, because I always just have a little espresso in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I made that and then also had a water and then was like, oh, yeah, I have to make the matcha. So I am like really buzzing right now. It's <laughs> but that's good. It means we'll be we'll be lightning fast on our, yeah, on yeah, our yeah. things. This is really good. I'm I'm having um, I, I, I have had a matcha on another episode. And this time I went with a different type of matcha from a coffee shop near me. This is from social. Oh, nice. Um, and this is. Uh... See, I've never done cinnamon on top before. Oh, really? No, I've never done cinnamon on matcha. I really, I, I quite like it. It's just a bit grainy, I find, when you put cinnamon on, on top of stuff. Because mm. I, I put I, it on top of um, cider. You know, like oh. in the winter, like I'll put cinnamon on top of cider. Because yeah, it's, it's nice, but I find it gets, it gets quite grainy, though. Mm -hmm. I usually mm. like to mix it around a little bit to avoid that grainage. Oh, yeah, no, see, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> you said to place it on top and so therefore i am placing it on top. i see i forgot the detail sorry <laughs> that's okay yeah. so hang on let me let me let me just let, clear something up okay. the whole point of us drinking this was like okay brit tell me what drink you get out of in the morning you said oh <laughs> matcha know. latte matcha latte with almond <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And then you 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 then proceed to make an espresso <laughs> and not the much because... I'm missing out on coffee because <laughs> of your inability to follow instructions. Okay, but listen, I want it to be more interesting, <laughs> so I thought a matcha was better. Genuinely, that's why I did that. <laughs> well, I did thought... you drink matcha before? Yeah, I drink matcha all the time, and I used okay. I used to drink coffee every day, and then I sort of stopped for a while. And then when you had first told me about this podcast, I was like, "Oh, I'll do matcha." Like it was just always going to be matcha. Mm -hmm. And then I switched to coffee recently, and then didn't. And then it was like I could say coffee, but that's just so boring. You know, mm -hmm. there's not as many but steps involved. That's not boring. That's uh, not boring. A shot of espresso would be very unique. <laughs> it would be. She's okay. Slams <laughs> cup down on desk. Yeah, no, it, everyone, this is why this idea came up. I, I came up with the idea on, on my on my Twitch stream with a bunch of people. But um, this, this uh, uh, please follow me on Twitch, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, but everyone has their unique drink. Even if it's the same, they've all got their own little unique things that they like to do with it. And that's yeah, why we're, right. that's why we do it. Um, why did you choose matcha? When did you start drinking matcha? I started drinking matcha like late last year, right before Christmas. I quit coffee altogether mm. and wanted to still have a drink. And I had always heard that matcha was just generally better because it's like more of a slow release of caffeine rather than just like an all in one hit. So you don't crash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be good for my anxiety at the time. So, and it definitely was. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I went a long time without coffee too. I was impressed with myself. It's like I'm listening to my own story. I did exactly the same thing. Really? Um, yeah, I did the same thing um, at the beginning of the pandemic. I had my first panic attack. I was like, okay, I can't do coffee. Mm. And then, and then, mm. uh, and then I went cold turkey after working in a coffee shop for a very long time. And that was... That was a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you you were working in a coffee shop with, and had not had coffee in a long time, like at the same time? No, no. So okay. so I I had been working up until uh, I think it was like March that I worked 
part time at a coffee shop, mm. and then and then they 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 fired us all because they were like, oh yeah, no, the, the, we're, we're just gonna let you go for a week until this blows over, and then we'll get you back. And then and then I I was like having a hard time. Had my first panic attack while doing the dishes because it's I mean it's scary. And then uh, and then I just went okay. Well, if I'm having a panic attack, I can't I can't do coffee anymore. So like dead after after working for like years in coffee i just mm. stopped and yeah. um and that made things worse to be honest really <laughs> oh, no. well yeah because i because i've been cutting co- i cut coffee out of my like life so then that you're I've been also having... like yeah having withdrawal yeah. symptoms yeah yeah. Okay. yeah 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 did you go through any of that oh yeah i had bad headaches for like yeah. two weeks I, and I drank a lot of water, but also because I had the matcha, I think I like tricked myself into thinking oh, I'm still getting caffeine. It's just different. Yeah. Caffeine's a state of mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it totally is. Oh, that should be a song. Caffeine is a state of mind. Yep. Yeah. Someone write that and give me credit, please. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I've always wanted to do is make music. You know those. Okay. Oh, you know, Mark Ribier. Yeah. 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 I every Sunday watch his live stream because I'm obsessed with him and like mm. he does the loop daddy stuff and I want to do yeah. that so bad. I just like don't play any instruments. So I mean, to be honest, neither does he. He just sings and then pushes buttons, doesn't he? Most of the time. Yeah, but he but he can play the piano. He like you can tell oh, right. he understands the chords. Yeah. And those yeah, are, that's I, the thing. I don't know that. You don't have any any musical understanding? No, I'd say I have musical understanding in terms of dance, but that's different. Mm, like I yeah. can I can understand how to count music and like I kind of have a very 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 little little understanding of music theory. Mm-hmm. But it's rough now cuz I haven't been dancing in a long time. So. Yeah. yeah. So would you would you want to start like trying to learn piano or I would. I'm sure, I'm sure you could uh you could get like a little fold down yeah, you just got to get a piano. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, all we need. Son- <laughs> <laughs> you just need the piano. You know how to play. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> my sister has a piano at, at her place that she never plays, but she is trying to learn like recently, but she's in school. So like she doesn't have the time and like, right. I always give her a hard time for it because I'm like, if I could just like take your piano, I could learn. But do you think, do you think that... I always found that I, because I, I bought myself a, a guitar once. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's my birthday. I'm going to buy myself a guitar and I'm going to learn guitar. And that yeah. lasted all of maybe two months. And then I was just like, there, it is still outside in my hall, waiting, <laughs> waiting sitting. to, waiting to find a better owner. And yeah. uh, I, I kind of want to just put it out on the street, but also I paid money for it. I'm like, no, I should. I should sell this, but then who wants to deal with that? Yeah. So would you, do you think, do you think you would, you would commit to, to, to it if you, uh, if you had the, 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 the hand me down piano? Also a name of a great song, by the way. Yeah. Oh, this is great. We've got our first album ready to go. I love this. Um, no, so no, <laughs> I don't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have to be realistic with myself. I pick up yeah. new hobbies all the time and never, ever commit to them long term. Mm-hmm. I'll commit like you two months and then that's it. I have unfinished knitting projects. I have I started crocheting. I started what else? I was jewelry making at one point. I used to make those friendship bracelets all as an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just never I never like they're always just like incompleted little hobbies essentially and at what point did it click that that was adhd for you (laughs) recently (laughs) very recently (laughs) like it's because ben has been saying it to me for years Mm -hmm. Ben, my partner ben for anyone watching who doesn't know and he and he uh so he's always been saying it to me. He's like, you for sure have ADHD. And I always, I was always like, yeah, but like everyone says that, that they have ADHD. It's just like a thing. Like I'm not like, no, but, um, but then my therapist was like, maybe we'll try, you know, putting you on medication. It was recently that he said this like a month ago. And I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, I have it. <laughs> like I ha- I actually have it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, this is what we do. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And then <laughs> suddenly everything made sense to me. 
in my life that and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah. So had, at that point, had you not done, were you very aware of like how it presents in women at that point? Were you like fully like down the rabbit hole? You had no idea? No idea. I no had very idea. little, my, all of my knowledge still to this day kind of comes from just Instagram videos of like reels of people being like, <laughs> when, when you have ADHD and this hat, like yeah. that's all my knowledge right now. I think I'm still a little bit in denial, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it the, God, it reminds me of that story when, uh, a woman got sent uh, coupons for diapers by Walmart. Because the algorithm had figured out that she was pregnant before she hid, before she did. What? So it, yeah, I I don't know if this is actually true. I remember this story now, and I don't have. I need to look this. Up. <laughs> Hang on. I need to look up if this is a real story. <laughs> I don't even know how. Hang on. This might be. This might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hang on, hang on. It sent coupons for baby items to customers according to their uh, algorithmic pregnancy scores. Uh, so uh, there was a woman in high, uh, 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 a girl that was in, in high school that was getting coupons for baby clothes and cribs, and it turned out that the, that the, the, uh, the girl was pregnant before she even realized. That... Would so it's just so funny. <laughs> so do you think that 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 was it? It was just like Instagram had figured it out before you had. Probably, honestly, because I mean, well, I would just watch those videos and like them because, and I would, and then the more I saw, the more I was like, I'm relating to a lot of this. This is really strange. Yeah. And, yeah. But again, I'm like, yeah, but it's social. It's like Instagram. Like maybe it's just like everybody I can experience like a, a little bit of an ADHD and like, but not the whole, like I was just imagining like, no, it's, it's much bigger, but it was like everything that someone mm -hmm. with ADHD on the platform is like, this is something I deal with. It was like, Oh, me too. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? When did you find out that you, cause you have ADHD uh, too, right? I mean, I, I haven't been diagnosed officially. That's the only uh, thing. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's one of those kind of, everything's pointing to yes but it's difficult to get a yes kind of deal yeah um, it's it's uh it, especially when it, and i was i was looking back over the the podcast that i've recorded so far and like four of the five people have adhd and i'm like oh is this is this slowly becoming an adhd podcast <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i think well, it's that meme of like, hey, if you're the one friend in your friend group that doesn't have ADHD, I've got bad news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, for, I mean, it's it's I think what it is for me is that when you um, when you don't have the context, you don't see the symptoms until until you have the context of it. I think mm. there's stuff in my childhood like I would lose stuff all the time. I was I was like reprimanded all the time for like drifting off and like looking out the window and not getting work done. And like I became such a good liar about not doing my homework and reasons why I couldn't do it because I would like leave it until the last minute mm -hmm. and then try and rush it because that's this that's the what is it? I don't even remember the term. Um, and at the time I was just like, well, I'm just I just don't like school. Yeah, me too. That was the right? exact same. Yeah, so it's, it's... It's it's funny, though, because I also had dance after school, and mm. that was, like, my hyper-focus thing. Like, that was the thing that I yeah. was obsessed with. Yeah. But, yeah, I also would just, like, lose shit. I just had the messiest bedroom as well, yep. and my mom hated it because my mom's very much, like, is very particular about the cleanliness of her home. And so... She would yeah. be so angry with me if she saw my room a mess. And like, yeah. and so I would be like, okay, I guess I'll clean it. But my version of cleaning was just shoving everything in a closet. Yeah. Having it, having a doom drawer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many yeah, yeah, doom yeah. drawers. Yeah. Yeah. Many doom drawers. <laughs> okay. So do you find that you, f that you develop systems to cope with the things that you would get in trouble for a lot? Because I think that's the thing that I, I worked out. Like, I was always late. Like, I'd miss trains all the time, and I'd always be late. So then mm -hmm. I just, like, have to be 10 minutes early now. 
Like I, I set oh, clocks to yeah. be early and things like that. Oh, I and do then, do that too. Yeah. I didn't, didn't and think it, that, and that was it's, connected. And it, and it's those things that you then go like, well, that's just me making a system. It's like, yeah, because you need the system. Otherwise you screw up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Not everyone has systems so that they can not be late for things. Ah. Yeah, it's so true. Oh, it's so true. Wow. <laughs> this is really, this is like a little therapy session. It's great. Uh, hey, that's podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I finished my matcha, by the way, and it's very good. This is, I like this recipe. I might do cinnamon again. It's great. Nice. I found mm. it in the the matcha thing that I got. My friend recommended uh, to me. Erica, do you know Erica? She was on the next step years her. ago. I don't think I know Erica. No. Okay, so she so she gave me the like. She was like, "This is the matcha that her mom recommends to her, and she, whatever." She's like, "It's the best." So I used it, and it came with that little recipe in it of like how to make a matcha. And oh, that's great. Cinnamon on top and. So I can't take credit, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Do you see? Do you see a lot of people from from your? I mean, obviously, Brennan is like <laughs> scratching at the door to come in like a cat every two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but um, but do, do you hang out a lot with other people? Or do you have do you have different? I mean, how does it how does it change over time? Being like having people that you were so close to. As, you know, because I mean, you went on tour with people, those kind yeah. of things. Do you? Is it? Is it similar to like school, where you have those people that kind of hang around, or like they move and then you fall out of connection, or is there kind of like a a deeper kind of thing? No, you're to- It's. I think it's a little bit of both. It's like you disperse after the show ends, or like after your time on it ends, and then you just like don't see each other for a long, long period of time. And then we, you do the like, oh, we'll we'll meet up once a year and like do Christmases or something, and then and then that happens like once, and then yeah. everyone's schedules don't line up again in the future. So so we just kind of give up, and then but now it's just like, oh, when I'm in the same city as you, let's grab a coffee or something recently i saw victoria um yes for the first yes. time in like years and that was so fun it was so fun um and i might be seeing sam grecky as well later this week oh that's good i think yeah so it's like it's nice like getting to reconnect whatever i've seen jenny a couple times too but it's just like mm-hmm. anyone who's in toronto i'll see on occasion more often but a yeah. lot of them have went to la so like yeah it right. is very much like school though. It's like you have it's a bit of a high school reunion moment where like the first meeting is kind of like, oh, like we're you're yeah. we're in different places, but I knew you from then, so it's like not much has changed, but yet a lot has mm-hmm. changed. Yeah. yeah, especially cuz remind me how old you were when you started TNS? 17. Right. 17. So yeah. so you are like three different people since then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So Truly. it's compl- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that must be yeah. so that it's so jarring when you first mm-hmm. uh, bump into them or when, when you first kind of catch up. It must be just like, what kind of hat do I wear when I'm around you? Yes, yeah, kinda. And then like sometimes, sometimes you end up just like breaking through that barrier, and then like it's back to like the like oh the same kind of banter, and like you reconnect, mm-hmm. but and it feels like no time has passed. Like sometimes that happens, but like you know, mm. not always. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, and so does that does that just become does that just become like I, I guess for people that aren't in the industry, that can that can feel a little bit um what am I trying to say? <laughs> we'll cut this part out. I well no, I always I always say it's like it's like high school, like, oh, if you were to have a high school reunion, it's like mm. it, it is genuinely like that. It's the same thing. And that's why, like, when people ask me, would you go back to do the next step as much as I did it? Like, if they wrote Riley in, like, mm-hmm. which I would do it because it, I think it would be fun and, like, whatever. But I was, like, it would feel weird because it would feel like I'm going back to school in high school, you know? Yeah. Like, that's... I, that's that could work, yeah. though. That would work. You could play that. Like, Riley, yeah, she's going back true. and everything's weird. Yeah, exactly. Well, you'd have to. If it's if that's how I'm feeling, I kind of have to use it. Yeah, I think. That, God, we see. This is why we need to just be writing scripts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone 
always says that. They're like, Britt, do you just want to write the show? Do you just want to write the show? Because <laughs> I'm always like, oh, what if this happened and then this happened? And a yeah. lot of it, I always laugh because I'm like, the things I come up with are sometimes absurd. Like they would never. Yeah. Yes. But sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll stumble on an idea where I'm like, that, I think that was actually pretty decent. But yeah, yeah it depends. Sorry, I bumped my, my yeah, name. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Do you, do you think that that would translate to, do you think you could take those ideas to, to a, a, a new show or a different concept, but kind of, cause I know that you and I saw that um, you and uh, Brennan were kind of toying with the idea of, of uh, uh, what was it? Like someone that used to be on a, on a reality show or, or what was it in the behind the scenes? It was like, oh, yeah. like a reality show and then yeah. they're, they're like having to, having to mm -hmm. i i have yes the it was the what was it it was um that we are we open our own studio or something where we run competitions and we make a category for our age group simply because we want to because you want to, to glory compete. days yes yes yes, yes 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 yeah yeah so do you think do you think that would be would you st if you were going to write something because you you're clearly driven by it yeah would you write would you write something that is dance affiliate affiliate i think i'd have to i think i'd have to i would do it in the competitive dance world because my parents own a competition so i also have a lot of behind the scenes or like understanding of how that world works and then like how like the like what the studio director's job is in their relationship to the comp owner and like there's a lot of very interesting characters in that world like if i go to a weekend to work for my parents sometimes yeah. i will I'll, I can just like people watch and it's never not entertaining. It's amazing. Like it's, it's a missed opportunity in, I think. And then that's why I think with the next step, it's like my way to brain. This is all I'm coming to realize that like, I've been wanting to write something like this for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I think I just need to combine everything. Like you said. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. You just need to, you just need to have a limitless episode and just, you know, take your, take your medication, put yourself in your bedroom, <laughs> yes, just... have, have, have water and ramen on the side so that you can stay fed and, and, and hydrated. Rum? Ramen, not oh, rum. Ramen. <laughs> I was like, rum. What We're wanting fuck? to be productive, not ruin our lives, Brittany. Wait, can I, can I swear? <laughs> yeah, 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 fine. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, okay, it's, okay. it's, in, it's encouraged it's encouraged don't worry about it amazing but I, I i feel like it would be i think it's very could we actually do this i like it's, yeah. <laughs> it could it feels like it's uh uh a, a, a kim's convenience or a or um or a uh i was gonna say strays but that's literally just kim's convenience spinoff but um <laughs> you know like like yeah. like a, a a a one camera sitcom of of bizarre mm. dance moms and oh i have so inflated many stories and like absolutely the, the amount of i could think of five offhand of little incidents that could happen that are hilarious and i have mm. a, a non like i was raised in that world yeah and i also I still have access to it on a regular basis so i'll go back and like now i'm looking at it as an adult who's no longer in that world mm. and also like yeah as a bit of a writer which is uh, yeah it, so it's it's funny because I have been talking about this particular idea for so many years now. And yeah. like I've never jumped into it because I've always been like, well, I don't know if I'm that talented of a writer yet or I don't know. But then but like, let's be honest, Brit, a lot of writers aren't. It's just that they can finish a script. Yeah. There are so many movies that are terrible that are That's going true. out and get, being given to these writers because they can finish a script. It's That's so it. so true. Well, you write too, don't you? I mean, right in air quotes. It's like the guitar out in the hall. I've got a script out there as well. <laughs> someone well, will pick it up. <laughs> yeah, someone else will will write it. Maybe you can sell that, and they can yeah, finish it for sell you. Sell that and keep the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I I I I also want to write because there are. Th I'm like, God, oh, I could do better than this. I could write mm -hmm. better than that. For God's sake, this is so bad. Come on, I could write better than that. Yeah. And then I start and then immediately stop because I, I, I think my problem is I have twofold problem. One, my taste doesn't match my writing talent. And then I also edit as I write, which is the death of any mm. screenplay because you uh, don't want to do it because it's bad. So do you <laughs> You're do? You're just like, this feels bad. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> do you do um do you do like outline stuff like do you do like in your prep work before you actually sit to write the script itself i think i have like so when i when i had like so i have one concept that i won't talk about but i have one concept that i really wanted to do and i had like a bunch of different scenes that i really liked and so i was just trying to work a skeleton for the pilot into into these and have these scenes and like where i want it to flow and yeah. uh and i think it's it's lack of training for a start but it's also just like not knowing exactly uh where i i think that i can't remember who said it and someone will correct in the comments or whatever but it was something like um when you finish your script is when you start because you at the at the end of the script is when you know what the script is about so then you have to go back and start again mm. and so i feel like part of the problem for me is that i don't know exactly like the the main aim of it i think i think there has to be a through line much like kim's convenience and you know with kim's convenience the idea was about an estranged family and about family values and like you know those kind of things with with all of the comedy and stuff on top of it yeah same with same with uh with um schitt's creek as well i'm, I'm talking about canadian productions and but in you know with schitt's creek it was about an estranged family and slowly them growing as people and coming together as a family again, which is relatable. Yeah. And then you have all of the comedy and the weirdness on top again. So I feel like I just don't have that that through line yet. I just have like the scenes that I know would be fun to to shoot or, right. or whatever. I feel like what helps or what I mean, I'm talking like I've I've written a full script, but um <laughs> <laughs> But when, whenever I read about or, like, hear other writers talk about the process and whatever, there always seems to be this idea of, like, you don't actually, like you said, like, you just kind of start and you see where it takes you, not never having a preconceived idea of what it's going to be. Mm. And then once you get to that point of, like, oh, this is what it is, then then you can really have that through line. But that doesn't happen at the top. You know what I mean? You don't go into it with that idea as much. You start with, like, a something Mm -hmm. so i don't know which yeah i, I, I need I, to take my own advice but yeah we both need to take our own advice like yes. god damn it's so yeah it's so easy you just start blah 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 and it's like no yeah from from where you are it's easy yeah where you haven't fucking done it <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. But then, you know, maybe that's just that we don't have the the committal powers that other people do. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is, is those people that finish scripts uh, yeah. know how to focus better. I don't know. Or they they are uh, they enjoy finishing scripts because they're psychopaths. I don't know. I feel like better medication. Yeah, or they're just <laughs> hey, it's Hollywood. They're probably highly medicated. And that's the deal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Would you ever go to Hollywood? Um, if I had to work there, yeah, I would never live there. I've been a few times and every time I go, I've been at different times in my life. Cause I always was like, I feel like I should probably be there, but like, so I would go cause I'm like, yeah, it's like Hollywood. It's where you go. But then I would just feel like miserable. Like there would mm -hmm. never be a moment where I feel inspired or like excited. Cause I'm just like, everyone is so focused on, it seems like everyone there is so focused on like the image of not the like substance of anything yeah. so it's just yeah. very like surface level and and maybe i'm just like not searching hard enough like whatever it's a very big place but it's just very like i just feel like my soul would die slowly if i lived there <laughs> so yeah would you go do you think that's <sighs> i always put it off because i didn't really know many people there and I feel mm. like the idea would be I'd go there because I, I did that when I went to New York. I just went there and I was just like, oh, OK, now I'm in New York and I don't <laughs> I didn't really know where to go or anything. Mm. Um, so but then after the pandemic, I've just made so many friends that are in in L.A. now that mm. I feel like I would at least enjoy my time seeing my friends, if nothing else. Yeah. But also right now with the strikes and everything, L.A. is just a, a death's is in a death spiral so i i i don't think it would be particularly productive to go there right now no definitely not but do you think it's do you think you have enough did you have friends when you went there or do you do you think that you have more friends there now that it would be slightly more enjoyable i have more friends there now i had a lot of at the time that i went there was a few people who came or who were already in la who i had met through acting class or like other projects because before it was just people from the next step 
Right. And the, the last time I went was actually during, it was right before my last tour with the next step. So we actually had rehearsals in LA. So it was kind of like I was there for work, but not really. Like I just happened to be in LA and then they were like, well, let's get rehearsals while we're there. So why were the rehearsals in LA? Like it wasn't predetermined. It was just like, oh, Britt, you're in LA. Do you think we could have a rehearsal while, while you're here? Oh. Of just you and yeah, oh. it was one of those. I was like, like, what season is this? Where they were... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, God, I knew they had a bigger budget in the earlier seasons, but come on, that's <laughs> ridiculous. Yes. Living in LA. No, for me. And no, you that's would, a no. You, you would maybe go to visit friends, you said? Yeah, I'd go to visit friends. Um, I've also never been. Like, I've never been to the west coast of the States. I've only been to Vancouver. So I feel like it would be an experience, to say the least. Mm. Especially only having done, in the States, I've only done New York and Florida. So, uh, oh, yeah. have I done anywhere else? I mean, I've traveled through towns to get places on planes, but, you know. Yeah. So I feel like LA would be a very unique experience, to say the least. Yeah. Um, I'd be curious to know your thoughts on it. Nah. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. It's such an interesting I, place. How has how has it been how has it been for you? I mean, obviously I don't want you to spoil the series because it's still coming out, but how has it been for you to experience the series TNS? Uh from the sidelines from the sidelines season, season seven eight? season eight. no season oh, seven, seven season eight everything? yeah yeah it's very it it's weird mm -hmm. because it's like i'm i'm so still attached to like what it was when i was on the show so i feel like a lot of what i'm doing is just comparing of being yeah. like oh we used to do it this way or that wasn't a rule back then you know but it's like, it doesn't matter. Like obviously shows like it changes, but I think it's, it's interesting because I know that there are so many constraints. Like you said, like the budget is not there. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I cannot imagine the stress that everyone involved in that goes through on a regular basis. Like the writers then also choreographing because apparently you have a week to put together every single routine. And I'm like, ha like, which like we would have two weeks in the beginning, I remember, and then we would have sporadic rehearsals throughout shooting and shooting would be two to four months. So it was like we had like an extended amount of time to always touch base. And like if if we had some time off, we would, could be like rehearsing the routine on our own, like we would have time for that. So it wasn't like the rehearsals were only two weeks, like we it was spread out over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And yet and yet also too the it it seems that they've written in more dances than when we were on. Cause I remember in our seasons, we would have like the one routine that we're preparing and we would just be working on that. And then, so it was really easy to be like, Oh, we're going to do these two counts of eight in this scene. And so everyone knew what they were doing. It was super like quick. We didn't yeah. have to review. Yeah. That was a thing that you brought up in your videos recently. And, and also when you were talking to Brennan in, in, in his show as well, is the, the, the thing that seemed the most jarring for you recently has been that that instead of seeing the the like small sections of the big dance that shows up in the finale you're seeing a bunch of dances that are maybe not tied into the dance as much as at the end mm -hmm. as, as it would be otherwise yeah I, I know it's jarring for you and it's 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 a difference that is very like out there but do you feel like that adds a value do you think it it would be do you think it's just a different beast? Like, what's your take on it? I think the reason it's jarring is because I I come from that world and I'm and I'm like, that's just not what we would do for preparing for something. It's just like have random dances happening. Yeah. But because it's a television show and they're trying to entertain the audience, like it makes sense that they have all those little dances. But I also feel like on the other hand as well, I'm like, oh, well, if you only have the one routine and you're working on and you show little clips of it, it, wouldn't that make it easier to shoot? Because you wouldn't have as much rehearsals. You wouldn't have as much time. Like you have less time to work with and more dances than the, than I feel like the ability to to let the dance sh dances shine is lessened because you're not giving the dancers as much of an opportunity to like properly practice the routine and actually get familiar with it and be able to perform it because I, I do feel like like in the competitive dance world, we would start our routines in November 
And then we would perform them in March, end of March, early April. And we would be every single week practicing. So like we had them solid and it, mm-hmm, and that's why mm-hmm. it's so more, much more impressive. Whereas if you're kind of throwing something together last minute, it is really, really, really hard to have everyone who all comes from different dance backgrounds, different like styles like to be able to merge it all is I can't like that's hard that's really not an easy task and to not have the time to do that which is why I was like it would make more sense to have I think one routine that you then have like pieces of it in the thing and it could be kind of like a uh, like but then there's also like all the dances that happen because of a story beat so it has nothing to do with like their training it has everything to do with like these two people are in love and now they're breaking up so they just do a little duet you know and like those ones I get you can kind of even improv those a bit more because there's it's much more of like a story because they're, they're, they're supposed to be a little bit more spontaneous at that point yeah so like yeah. those I get like throwing mm. them in and like it's another little treat for the audience like but just like having the dancers put together a routine just for an exercise seems but and again I'm like but also on the other hand I can't imagine how the writers are also with such little time being like okay let's ha- what else, what's something new that we can put in that to like teach a mm-hmm. lesson or whatever mm-hmm, so like mm-hmm. it, it's it's tricky I can imagine yeah I mean it's it, it's there's a lot of plates spinning with this show yeah. for sure yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, um, it's definitely, uh, like just remembering season eight, um, at the end, uh, when we go to nationals, like nationals itself was really, really difficult for everybody involved. Not only because, mm-hmm. not only because, you know, it's, it's shooting on location, which is already stressful as is, but like people got COVID and then there was like a fire alarm for no reason. There was uh, it was just very very complicated time. <laughs> so so you know if you throw COVID in there and the fact that the fact that we managed to get you know as much as we did out of it is is, is it's always an impressive feat for me to mm. to see them them kind of pull off what they do. But I do understand your point. As a non dancer, it's from my perspective. I'm like. Oh yeah, no. You want to you want to see as many cool dances in this show as possible. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't you? Like mm-hmm. any excuse, you know. Let's make up another thing to to have people do a cool dance to. Yeah. But then that's maybe that that's not. I don't know whether that's. Uh, I don't know whether that if that might not be true of of the dance world, and that might not be true of like real life. But then also, Nick does baking in his office. I so know. <laughs> it's this show has very has always been like even in season one. I remember being like, "This isn't the this isn't what dance competition like studio life is like. Like this isn't it." But you can't. It's it's a show, and you ha- like they have to make their own world, and they like. It all makes sense to me, but like I just again, I'm like that's not the way it's supposed to be. So for whatever reason, I just can't not see that. But then, then also, like a uh, uh, <laughs> a a girl dissolved into pixie dust, like Thanos snapped her out of existence. Oh, yeah. So like, <laughs> anytime yeah. anyone comes in, the well, why didn't it just the, the, the girl turned into pixie dust and <laughs> another girl danced through said dust? As though it was nothing. <laughs> yep. For God's sake. Yeah, this show really took a magical turn. Yeah. At, at some points, I feel like now they don't. They they stepped away from that a little bit. I remember the creator of the show, Frank, who was the original showrunner when we were on. That was his idea. He always loved adding magic into his shows, and after if he because he was planning uh he was wanting to to like continue on or whatever into like future seasons and he wanted the internationals we win internationals and then we go to intergalactics was what he wanted (laughs) and so he was like we we would have been i know we would have been competing with aliens and on a different planet and i was like at what point did this show Like, and, and it's like, that sounds awesome and like so cool and interesting, but imagine like you don't have much budget. You're, you can't put people in makeup to make them look like aliens in a realistic way. 
So I guess they would just have to look like humans and have like funky eyeliner or something. Cause then in which case you might as well do like vampires and stuff. Cause then you can at least go to party city and get plastic teeth and whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, at that yeah. point. Yeah. Wow. Intergalactic. That would have been great. The like, budget would not allow for that, but that's no, great. I know, but he had a big imagination. How does it feel for you that, that a lot of what you are still doing and talking about is next step related? I'm in. Because tell it to someone that is still in it so that I know what my next 10 years is going to be like. <laughs> I'm in two minds about it. I It was this crazy, exciting adventure that I still ha am processing because it's such a unique thing that no one really tells you about or like teaches you how to handle in school or anything. So like I was just going into it blind, like we all were. And then all of a sudden you're famous kind of. And like, and so it's like you're, and then my entire world just became the show. And then my exit from it was also so abrupt. So it was kind of like, I was just like, now what do I do? And so I was like, I had to re relearn I guess how to and so I like separated myself from the show entirely and then now coming back to it it's because it's like there is still this big community of people who really enjoy it and so I like that I like reconnecting with people and I also like going back to that time in my life and just like processing it in a new way because there it was a complicated experience it wasn't you know r rainbows and sunshine the whole time there was a lot of stuff like behind the scenes and like that was really complicated for any 17 year old to deal with but now put that on a massive show that people are now watching you go through so it's like it, it it's really uncomfortable and kind of embarrassing but also I'm like well that's being an actor so mm -hmm. I'm, I, it's been helpful for me actually because it's been very cathartic of like going back to that time and it's sometimes I'll react to a storyline in a particular way because it reminds me of a storyline that happened on the show that was somehow triggering for me so it's actually been kind of helpful because then I'll go oh what was that why was that triggering for me and then I can like I'll sometimes like make a note of it and talk about it in therapy so it's really helpful in that way mm -hmm. selfishly mm -hmm. but also people really freaking love it so all right yeah I'll milk this cow for as long as I can <laughs> honestly yeah absolutely <laughs> I mean there's yeah. there's definitely like it, 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 and you you see it in uh, shows across across the board like you know there's the and, and i think there's different ways that people um work with it you look at star trek actors you know from from you know uh, uh from the very beginning to now they're, they're still doing the convention circuits and they just brought out picard just to wheel out the next generation cast again the office actors are all like mm -hmm trying to make sure that you remember that they were on the office and those kind of things mm -hmm. um there's that, a weird one with stanley i don't know if you ever saw it the the, no. the guy that plays stanley had this weird kickstarter where he was playing uncle stanley but he was definitely not stanley from the office because he didn't have the rights to the character but he was still playing the character and it was just a <laughs> kickstarter for this like this like web series that he wanted to do with some random guy that he met in LA. It's very oh, weird. Very weird. weird. <laughs> oh wait, I <laughs> so imagine... think I did see this. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So imagine that you just like you're doing like a Riley show, but it's a Kickstarter, and you're not allowed to actually play Riley, but you have to <laughs> wink at the audience and be like, "I'm actually Riley." Wink. Yeah. Well, that's. I feel like I'm kind of doing that by calling it Riley reacts and like. Mm. And I, well, I that's also. The... Is that is that though, or is it more? Is that more for SEO and for making sure that people find the channel? Yeah, you're right. It is that. It is more that people find it, but also like, I also have this this idea or this hope that uh, I can kind of transition my audience into stuff that I'm doing now, or like seeing me as an as more of an adult because I still I feel like I still read quite young naturally. But like, so I'm like trying to age out of that show while still bringing the people along. So it, it's, yeah, it's a weird transition, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, it'll, how it'll go, how it'll happen. Mm. Do you, do, do you segueing perfectly? Do you feel like that's 
helped or do you think that 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 really um worked in your advantage for chateau laurier um like what helped like like you know the 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 looking looking young because uh, your your character is still quite a young person right so yeah yeah yeah, so yeah do you think that do you think that that was uh, uh that helped you in in bagging the role i was just trying to do a good segue but i'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i was trying so hard it to was a segue good segue there. and then you ruined it <laughs> Uh, yes, I think it was very helpful. I, I don't actually know. I feel like, I feel like it was, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that they liked what I did because she wasn't, I don't think her age, if the character's age was specified in the script originally when I read for it. So I was like, I'm just going to do my, like, obviously you do your version of it. And then they liked it. And so then they wrote her to be young. Who's coming oh, to the that's big city, so good. That's which so I good. think is what they did. Because I, I mean, those writers are very, very talented, and they're any good writer. I feel like understands when they see an actor bring a performance, they they cater to what they're seeing if that's what they want, of course. So it's like, oh, you're you're doing this, you're making these choices, and then they write more of that into it, which is in a weird way what the next step kind of was season one. And I don't know. I mean, maybe you can tell me if that's. Yeah, no, Nick was a dick. Nick was a dick in the original script. Was he? Yeah, he was like, he was super mansplainy uh, douche guy. Uh... And then I, and then I, they didn't give that note in the breakdown and I just came in and did my ripping off Doctor Who shtick and they were like, oh yeah, no, that's good. Let's do that. Nice. But also is because Alex Beaton was just very good at playing against it and it, the, mm -hmm. the chemistry between us worked so well that they were like, oh yeah, let's just make him like, well-meaning but irritating to emily <laughs> i loved your dynamic with emily oh i'm aware i watched every i watched every episode of your reaction <laughs> i think it's bloody marvelous yeah it was so i was like i was like oh i want i love that there's this like weird tension between the two of them and i remember pining for you two for your two characters to date <laughs> Because I was like, everybody dates on this show, so why not the teacher? Why don't the teachers get some action? You know, right, right, but right. not about the adults. Apparently, it's not about the adults. Adults don't get anything. No. Wink. Anyway, what was the wink to, for? Back to, <laughs> back to. So tell me more about. I'm I'm trying to plug the bit. Oh, sorry. You're taking it back to TNS <laughs> again. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't get away from TNS, and I'm trying really hard. But let's talk about TNS some more. Well, because that's whatever. <laughs> I have no energy to fight this. Um, okay, so period piece. How period is it piece. doing a period piece? Was it? Was it the first? Was it the first thing you'd done? Mm -hmm. The first thing I've done. I was intimidated because everyone there went to theater school and was like very professional and like so 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 talented and like had already proven themselves in the industry essentially yeah so yeah, yeah. i was like the new kid coming in and not only that but i i always and this is always something in the back of my mind when i'm on a set it's like oh i'm like the dancer turned actor like the, it's like this weird insecurity that i have so i imposter syndrome so it's like really difficult for me to actually like some i'll talk about this in therapy but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah it was really it was so eye-opening because i ha i was i wanted to do such a good job that i like really prepared ahead of time like how i wanted to play it i did a lot of research on the time period i remember like reading a lot of books at the time like all that stuff i had done and then when as soon as i came to set i couldn't help but feel still very like, oh, I don't belong here, but it worked so well because, and I think maybe it was because I was like, oh, this character doesn't belong here. Like she's, mm -hmm. she's the help and she wants to like climb the social ladder. And so it's like, and she's very naive about this, that whole thing. And so I'm like, oh, this is perfect then that I'm feeling this way because it's, it's leaning, it's helping me with this. And yeah, I felt like I learned a lot because seeing the, the other actors do their thing and everyone has a different way of working, of course, but it was like, it was helpful for me to then navigate how I was going to work based on who I was with 
in the mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. It was a great, it, it was a great learning experience, but yeah, period piece is just like, it's very fun. And it just like, I was so intimidated because anytime I think of period piece, I'm like, uh, it's like just a different world. But anyways, have you ever done period piece? <sighs> I, no, I'm always the guy behind the counter. I'm I'm the guy. Give, I'm like, hey, this is for you, and then I walk off. There's they don't they don't want. That's the oh no that, okay that's a lie. My first I had one line in rain. That's a period piece, right? Hey yeah 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 yeah. I I, I had to wear a, I got to wear a cape. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was I was I was a, <laughs> I was a letter delivery guy. That was nice. it. I walk in. I go. This is for you, and I walked out. <laughs> But Love I did the it. same thing that you did, though, because, like, that was the first bit of actual TV work that I'd done. That oh, okay. was like m- That was, like, Miles walks into shot and is actually in the shot. Yeah. And, uh, and it was delivering a letter to um, the Queen. So I was like, oh, and I was, like, super nervous, but I was like, oh, well, no, but that's good because I'm delivering the letter to the Queen and she's, like, super scary, so I, I just use it. Yeah, exactly. And it and I guess it came through because my dad watching it was like, "Yeah, you look nervous." I was like, "Okay, uh, thanks, but also good. All right, yeah, great. That's what we want. <laughs> that's good. Totally meant for that to come through. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fake. It's all fake. We're all faking it the entire time. It's all a lie. We're all nervous. It's fine. It's just how many people can cover that up with the talent that they have. That's it. <laughs> All right. Do you have time for a? Do you have time for a, a, an advice question? Sure. Fabulous. Okay. So this is from Jess. Okay. And Jess says, "How? <laughs> this is why I picked this one. It's great. How do you balance everything when you're in a creative field? I feel like I spend so much time and energy for little payout these days." <sighs> um. By the way, before we start, I have to. I have to preface. This is just our opinion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is just our opinion. It is not fact or law. Please don't sue us. Thank you. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Please don't sue us. Um, I feel like it's different for every person, maybe. Because creative mm. working in a creative field is like in general just very specific to the to the individual. Like I I am doing making YouTube videos, but I'm also acting and I'm uh writing and like and then sometimes we'll take random jobs. Like, so it's like, you have to kind of have the flexibility of like, okay, what does this week look like? It's going to be different every week. And you have to be comfortable with that unknown and being like, I don't know if I'm, well, how much money I'm going to make next month or, you know? And so I think just like that, like the, the ability to be comfortable in that, I think is the most important thing. And then having some kind of flexible system that isn't so rigid in terms of being like, like I'm not the type of person. I mean, obviously I have ADHD. I can't be like, okay, 9am I'm going to do this, this, this. And then 10am I'm going to do that. Like I cannot do that. I have to be like, I actually bullet journal, which I don't know if you know, bullet journaling. It's a, it's a system made by, I forgot his name already. Crap. He's this guy. He's this guy who, some some dude dude. coming up with it. (laughs) But it's amazing. It's bulletjournal.com. Just go to the website and his information is there. And he like teaches this analog system where you, you do like, uh, like separate spreads in a, in a journal. So you log like your weekly log, your monthly log, your daily logs, and you sort of consolidate things into what he calls collections. And then it becomes this like flexible thing. So like there are days where I don't use it. And I don't log anything, but then I'm not wasting any pages. Like I would always hate that in an agenda where it's like, this is your month mm-hmm. and then these are your weeks. If I didn't fill out a page, I would be like, oh, it's such a waste of space. <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. So yeah. yeah. And then you can make it your own. I can change the way the monthly log looks every month and I can adjust how much space I give myself for the week or whatever, because it's like, well, I have a lot going on this week. I need more space to like so anyways it's so it's a flexible system that i can like use to schedule things and then not being so hard on myself if i have a day where i don't get the things done that i wanted to get done and just you know being able to like have the discipline to do the task but also like don't burn yourself out and like still take the time to like eat food and sleep and 
things that you need, you know, it's, yeah. it's such a weird, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think it's, I think it did. You definitely gave a good, that was a good answer. I think okay. it's, it's especially now given the state of, I mean, if I, if I can just stand up on my little capitalism <laughs> soapbox here for a moment, <laughs> everything is being commoditized as much as possible. And creative work in itself is is no different. And so it's very understandable if you're not getting a lot of payout mm. for your work that it can be very debilitating and very demoralizing. Yeah. But I think it, it's that it's that eternal struggle of trying to do something you love for you while also not wanting to lose that free time you have to do it by having a regular job that pays the bills enough mm -hmm. it's it, it and and so one of the sacrifices that you have to make when you're a creative is you have to be like okay well i'm going to be underpaid for a lot of my life i'm going to be like you know and and for some people that's fine because they've got rich parents or for some people it's fine because they're in a particular area and it works for them but there are, you know, especially if you're going to be a creative, you know, you may never, I mean, <laughs> you may never buy a house, but then who's going to buy a house anymore? But, you know, those kind of, right? So there's there's a level of sacrifice that creatives have to make. And especially now with things the way they are, the sacrifices are very high. And it's not, in my opinion, it's not unreasonable for you to uh, lower the amount of creative energy you put out into the world to s keep your head above water. Because right now, that's what everyone's doing. Explain that last thought. I, 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 think, I think that everyone is trying to keep their head above, above water right now. Right and, right. and if you have to cut back on your creative endeavors to be able to survive because it's not paying out as much as you'd like i'm 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 considering this person could be like a, an animator or it could be like a poet or whatever and and they're not getting because we don't know the context we you know then they're not getting the the kind of payout that they want mm. to be able to support themselves right now supporting yourself is the is is supposed is like the thing that we all need to be doing because everything is so expensive that's so interesting too i agree with you but i also think that like if you as long as you commit and understand what's really important to you in your life and like mm. like you say t ticking the fundamental boxes like live place to live food mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know sp like literally the basic basic needs of survival then your creativity should never be the burden that makes you money, like you said, because because then you you are forcing yourself into shapes and molds without actually allowing room for exploration. And then you stumble upon something that's actually really that's amazing. And like if you can't create for other people, uh, it, like unless, of course, it's your job and whatever, like there's certain circumstances. But I mean, like when the, the thing that like feeds you or the thing that you really want to be working on is usually the thing that you don't think anyone would want to see or, and then it, it ends up being, you Can know, confirm. Can yeah. confirm. <laughs> it's this, true. <clears throat> and this is the end of the episode of the podcast. <laughs> 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 it's so I true agree. though. Yeah. I agree. Like you, there's, I think, I think you're very correct, Britt. I think when it comes to creative endeavors, you should be doing stuff that you want to do for you that creatively fulfills you and don't expect payoff or payout from it. If you don't get people watching it, then you're doing it for you anyway. It doesn't matter. And you're still going to learn from it. Mm -hmm. You're always going to learn from whatever you do. That's the thing. And you have to just make a lot of shit before something ends up like randomly taking off. Like you never know what it's going to be. Yeah. 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 And often it's just going to be like the thing that you pay the least amount of attention to. The, the amount of people I know that are, that, you know, that have big, big channels or whatever, or big followings, and they're like, yeah, I don't know. I just put this stupid thing out and like, I barely thought about it. And then I put out this really th big thing that I've been putting so much time into and no one cared about it. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can't predict that stuff. But as long as it's fulfilling you, that's fine. In terms yeah. of balance, though, 
in terms of balance, I I would say, you know, right now it's better to just make sure that you are keeping your head above water. If you yeah. are trying to make a career in a creative industry, every creative industry is in trouble. <laughs> so just keep your head above water. Learn AI. <laughs> learn AI. Yeah, exactly. Learn learn how to code your own AI bot and take over and make sure that it keeps <laughs> keeps you alive in the uprising. Yeah. All right. Um I think we should probably just call it then. Britt, where what are you what have you got coming up? What can we what do you want to plug? Plug something. Uh check me out on YouTube, my YouTube channel, just my name, Brittany Raymond. Um I post videos there about the next step usually, so like if you're a fan of that, then you'll like it, I think. And that's all for now. And then maybe this show that I'm going to write, definitely going to write now. Yes. Definitely. So wait for that in the <laughs> distant future. <laughs> oh god can't wait to read that one and a half pages it's good (laughs) i already wrote a scene for it and it's hilarious but to be honest with you the lead i think i need to make the one of the actor one of the characters more likable because right now he's like kind of for comedy purposes a bit of a racist (laughs) is that sorry (laughs) And it's like, <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I should be revealing that, but it's like oh, that they exist. And I <laughs> yeah, hang on, to... my phone's ringing. It's CBC. Oh. They're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, if I wanted it to be on like a CBC, I I'd, I'd need to change that. But I just thought like, I want to, I want to be honest about the world and like how, and anyways, well, it's, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So go watch <laughs> go watch the upcoming show Dance Racist coming to CBC Gem. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm changing it. It's it's it reminds me this character kind of reminds me of like like a Michael Scott but like before they made him likable like you know in the first season when he was like just a complete asshole but like didn't really like it's like he's just ignorant to it Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what I mean like that's kind of the vibe it is and so it's Mm -hmm. not like he's intentionally being like yeah I'm racist and I like that about myself you know like you're giving away too much on the podcast, Britt. Uh, well, whatever. I just okay, I yeah. can't shut up. Okay. You need to stop me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So go follow Brittany on on all of the the things Brit- at Brittany Raymond. Go watch Chateau Laurier, and mm. and Demi and all the other things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, we didn't yeah. even touch Demi. And anyway, That's thank okay. you for being here, Brittany. I, this has been really, really great. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Yay! All right, and we will see you next week.